tell us to mm. what extent the disease took you. What's, what, what was the end result? What was the worst of it? Were you bedridden? Were you, what, what happened? What all happened? Seven years in a wheelchair total. Seven years? Mm -hmm. Due to neurologic symptoms and severe weakness. Three years in the middle there, really toward the end, being housebound. Uh, well, excuse me, really during those seven years I was housebound. The three years was bedbound. Now, you've got these promises. Did they finally tell you what the conclusion was on the disease? What was it actually? Did they ever come to a conclusion? What yes, caused that it? Yes, it was, it was Lyme disease, hmm. late stage Lyme disease that is a bacterial infection that if it is not accurately diagnosed and treated early on in stages, um, Can go it disseminates extreme. throughout the body and infects every organ system of the body. And so what happened with me is I went undiagnosed for eight years. Actually, the disease began before I was in the Miss Texas pageant. I had it when I was in the Miss Texas pageant. It just had not really progressed. And that's a tick. From a tick, a tick bite. Is, it, uh, is that disease normally pretty hard to diagnose because it has, gives symptoms of other things? Right. It, it is called the new great imitator. It imitates every disease from Luke Eriks to MS, rheumatoid arthritis, mm. uh, any of the psychiatric mm -hmm. symptoms like depression or ADD. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yes, and there is no test really that can definitely rule conclusively in or out Lyme disease. But so if you've been in an in a area where there could be ticks, and this is primarily a deer tick, is that right? It doesn't have to be on deer, but they call it a deer tick. Is in that Texas, right? it's a different tick. It's the it's Lone Star tick. Lone Star tick. The tick that is the little bitty tiny seed tick in the spring. Okay. And so if, if your children or people around that and you see any kind of a symptom, best thing to do is to at least consider that and perhaps heavy uh, uh, and if you, pharmaceutical treatment for that uh, right. can, can deal with it, right? Right. If you have any kind of a tick bite and you know it, save the tick and have the tick tested. Okay. Too. And we, we want to say that because there's no need in people just living in fear, as you've seen with the uh, uh, pictures of where this thing, uh, terrible disease, took uh, uh, Natalie. You realize, boy, I don't want any part of that. So one of the things you can do is, is utilize the insect spray when your children are out where there could be a... Uh, uh, the possibility of being bitten, or if you think there is and find that there is, then have it inspected because it's very, very serious. Now, I want to hear the good side of this story because you are absolutely beautiful. You look like you could go back and do the Miss Texas pageant again, and and you really went from a state to where uh, if people had come in to see where you were, as we've seen from the images of where you were, it, you, many people would have written hopeless just and said, you know, she's never going to be able to get around and do much. So what happened? Right. What caused the turnaround? Well, um, and my, to comment on that, my parents uh, were encouraged strongly by physicians to have me committed to an institution mm. because I had lost so much of my mind mm. and uh, was unable to speak in sentences like to you here and look you in the mm. eye. And uh, because of the encephalitis from the Lyme disease and how severe it had become and how severe the dementia was, and uh, I would, uh, for three years, really, wailed night and day so loudly that the dogs in the neighborhood would all join in with me. Mm -hmm. And that was with me locked inside a closet in the middle of the home so that maybe my mother would not have to hear me. And, mm -hmm. uh, but there, I felt like I was being burned alive or electrocuted. Mm -hmm. And if that happened and there were no relief, 24 hours a day, what else would you do but just scream bloody murder? And that's what I did. But um, good news somewhere, please. The good news is that Psalm 11950 says, "This is my comfort and consolation in my affliction, that your word has revived me and given me life." Mm. That is the good news. That mm. all the way through it, even without deliverance, even without a physical change, His word revived and His word gave life, and His grace infused me with such strength and such an overwhelming manifestation of his presence that really I would not trade what I went through for hmm. that experience. It's really... Was the healing dramatic or slow and gradual as the progressive downward spiral? Did you come out of it with more of a slow process or did you begin to have a very rapid recovery? It's been very slow. and. Do you still feel like you're using, still recovering to some degree? I cert most certainly am. I'm still on uh, very heavy medical treatment and uh, very intense medical treatment daily. And But you uh, see the pro progress daily? I sure do, week by week. And to God be the glory. 
Mm -hmm. It's been three years coming very slowly, beginning just being elevated seven inches a day for five minutes a day. The Lord began using a medical treatment. He's used physicians. Sure. Definitely. And, uh, but it has been very slow. Did they give you much hope when they finally discovered what it was? No. Even after I was diagnosed and treated, three physicians met together and conferred about my case and concluded that I just was not going to make it. And if I did, I would really sort of remain in a vegetable state. Mm -hmm. So no, they did not. But I had God's Word to revive me and give me hope. <laughs> it works, doesn't it? God, God's Word never fails. We may not understand, even when, we, even when we don't see the healing like we want to, there's healing. And God used it. If we just let Him be God and glorify Him and magnify Him, what do you want to do now? What does God want you to do? God wants me to carry his comfort to others because 2 Corinthians 1, 4, and 5 says that God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. And the comfort that he gave me was really the fact that, I just told you, his word is living and it is active and it does possess power because even in that time when my brain was in such severe dimension affected by the Lyme, I forgot everything I learned in college. I forgot how to read music. That still has not really come back, even though I learned to read music from really before I began to learn to read words. I forgot much of my memories and my family and all through that whole time. But I never forgot the scripture I had memorized. Isn't that amazing? Oh, was... His word just stuck, mm -hmm. and it's bringing forth fruit, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. Now, he wants you honoring him. How do you see yourself doing that now. You've got a ministry called Shades of, of Grace. Grace. So what, yes. what do you want to do through that ministry? What does he want to do through you in it? To go and speak to people and teach. And my mother goes with me as well because she's as much a part of this story and helps develop the faith in me that uh, would be planted firmly on the rock, plant me on the rock through all of this. So we just go and teach and, and speak in churches, church services, ladies' retreats, and uh, things such as so that. So if, if people wanted you to come, we're going to put your website address up. They could contact you. If you can work it into your schedule, you'll do your best to go. That's what God wants you to do, right? Yes. And you said something about going to nursing homes to comfort people. Why do you do that? Because, obviously, the Word of God sustained me. And there is a scripture in Psalm 119 that says, Though I'm like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your decrees. Though I may be parched, withered, wrinkled, and worn, either from age or affliction, the power and the life that your word possesses is still precious and dear to me. Mm. And what would I do if I were in a nursing home? Because like you, I have had family in nursing homes for years. And as I began to go and visit them, after my years of affliction. I related so much with them and I could not imagine if I were confined to bed, I could not hold a Bible, could not read it, did not have a way to push a tape player to play it for me. What would sustain me? What would be my life? And so we are now developing a pilot program to coordinate volunteers to go in and read regularly several times a week to each resident in the long-term care facility and hopefully we will be able to do this uh, design a program that will work in different hospitals and other it's programs so as important. well. Is, is Natalie not a picture of the love of God mm -hmm. and the power of God and faith in her? Natalie, we just pray God will open doors for you and bless you. And if you want to know how to get a hold of you, you call, you may want to call for prayer. Say, boy, I need a miracle too. Well, we've got a miracle working God. You may need help. Well, don't hesitate to ask for it. But I also want to remind